Hello. <laughs> All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good morning and good night, as they say. Uh, noontime Eastern, that's where I'm at. I'm East Coast, represent, as you will probably hear my Boston accent show up <laughs> at the most opportune and inopportune times. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Thank God it's Friday. Friday, Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny because um, this week has just flown by. But let's prep ourselves for the weekend, shall we? Um, destination decluttered. Um, nice to see a lot of familiar eyes. Ah, oh, see, Fitzhenry, nice to see you. Long time no see, huh? Um, uh, Mary and Gingy and Awesome and Sherry and Lucy and Diane and User This and ooh, oh, UP Mariner, nice to see you. And Dana, Daily Bird. Um, all sorts of wonderful people showing up. Both folks that I have kind of met because I recognize your name. Um, and also folks that may be new to what I'm doing. Maybe you're just kind of flipping around on your, um, on your FYP, on your P, I guess, on your TikTok. And, uh, oh, funny, Jen Thorne just watching me on, um, YouTube. Yeah, well, this is live. This is live, not Memorex. And so, but thank you for watching the recordings on YouTube. You just reminded me, I'm going to write down to download yesterday's. Download. I'm telling you people, writing things down onto paper helps you get them done. Because then you don't forget download TikTok from yesterday. Yay. Okay, now I will actually remember to do it and then my brain can be more focused on um, coming here and providing quality content for you. Uh, what does it mean by that? So if we haven't met before, I see a number of people are coming in. And good afternoon, Dana. Uh, uh, hey, Kit Kat borrowed a trailer this weekend. I'm gonna get so much done in my attic. I love it, Kit Kat. What I wanna offer to you right now Celebrate every little thing you freaking do in that attic and don't get discouraged if you don't do as much as you thought. Seriously, celebrate the wins, minimize the losses. That will set you up for success moving forward because it will basically make it more fun to show up if you're not like, oh, I didn't get it done. Be excited about what you did do and be easy to forgive and forget about what you didn't do and show up and do it just a little bit, you know, the next time you do it. So awesome, I can't wait to hear about that. Now I will say this as a little kind of um, external accountability, you know, being a decluttering life coach, I know that there are many tools that we have in our toolkits that help us to do things. External accountability works for a lot of people. You promise yourself you do something. If you don't keep your promise to yourself, nobody else knows but yourself. Yourself knows and you feel kind of bummed about it, but nobody else knows. But you tell somebody I'm gonna do something, suddenly you are going to be more likely to take the action to do the thing. So Kit Kat, what I want to suggest to you is, now I honestly don't know when my TikTok lives are going to be next week, but I will be scheduling those. And if you're on my Destination Decluttered email mailing list, you will be the ones to find out about them before I even make a video about them and post it on TikTok. But how about this? In if one of those TikTok lives that I do next week, share the wins, share so we can all celebrate all the good stuff you got done, okay? There we go. Yes, just planning to work in your attic is a win. Now, planning is great. Trust me, I'm all about the plan. I have a plan. I'm freaking full of plans. Plans are awesome. But you know what's better? Doing that shit. <laughs> Doing the plan. Working the plan because the plan works. Well, wow. reminds me of corporate stuff I used to do. But a plan is up here, but when you do it, that's when you change your world. Okay, so I'm not dismissing the plan. The plan is imperative. It's like you can't go on a road map. You can't go on a road trip. Notice I'm pointing behind me from where you are now to where you want to go. You can't go on a road trip unless you have a plan. A plan is like a map. A plan is, if you think about it, a plan is a list of things to do that kind of goes this way. That you know if you do all those things, your life will be looking and feeling better from the top to the bottom. If you flip it on its side, it's kind of like those kind of mile markers along the way of when you're on a road trip. I know I want to go to this town. I want to go see this. I want to go do that. I want to go do that. And that will make me enjoy the ride as much as I'm getting to a destination. Okay, Kit Kat, I look forward to hearing from you. So let's celebrate the wins. Learn from the stuff that gets you stuck too. That's the thing. Um, so if we haven't met yet, I think I was introducing myself, but I sidetrack myself. I get a, a wee bit of the, of the uh, ADHD there, runs in the family. Uh, my name is Beth. Uh, I am a destination, I'm a destination. I am a decluttering life coach, and my coaching is called Destination Decluttered. 
I tell you that. So if you haven't followed my TikTok page, you can follow me at Destination Decluttered. Um, as somebody mentioned above, they were watching me on YouTube. Um, primarily the only videos on YouTube, but boy, are they handy for when you want to have kind of a TikTok live for me on demand is the recordings of my TikTok lives are downloaded from TikTok and then uploaded to YouTube so that you can just hit a feeder button and get what you need. Because usually what happens on these TikTok lives is encouragement, problem solving, talking to yourself better, feeling better, and you will notice the powerful difference in when you quiet down what I call your backseat drivers, and then you have that space and you listen and you finally give your own kind of co-pilot voice an opportunity to speak where they're kind of like, okay, you kids, are you quiet now? All right, here's what I think. This is your co-pilot. This is your co-pilot speaking. We're on a road trip. You're the driver. I say, go for it. I say, what do you want to do? Let's do it. Where do you want to go? I can help you get there. This is going to be fun. I got a road trip. I get snacks. I get food. I get stories. I'm going to make it entertaining. And it's not going to be as scary or as bad or as boring as you think it's going to be. Let's make it fun, people. Let's make it fun and get it done. It doesn't have to be either or. It's not like I either get stuff done or I have fun. You know, not all of it's going to be hippy skippy. Even on that classic American road trip, I was writing about it earlier today. There are points during that road trip between the East Coast and the West Coast where you will get tired where it gets kind of boring, where you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna keep on driving for six hours and I'm still in the same state and all I see is sand? Yeah, that's life sometimes. Not everything is yippy skippy all the time. However, if you wanna to get to where you wanna to go to, just move through the boring stuff as, as quickly as possible to get to the good stuff, okay? Um, so yes, my name is Beth, decluttering life coach. So I, I don't just say declutter and, and disregard your life. We incorporate your life so it's the quality of life you have. I teach this so you feel good about where you live, what you have, and what you do. And you make room for the stuff that's important to you in your life. Uh, Destination Decluttered, yep, here on TikTok and on uh, YouTube. Also, my website, Destination Decluttered on dot com, dot com. See, there's my first Boston accent. Destination Decluttered dot com. Uh, is where you can sign up for my free mailing list and also learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching and sign up for a consultation, okay? That's kind of like the, um, the, the commercial break before we get started. Um, so what I like to do on these TikTok Lives, if you've never been here, is I like to encourage you to, if you've been here before and you know the drill, maybe you can use this time, I suggest you use this time to benefit, make your home look better in the, just the next hour that I'll be live. Walk around and do some surface area decluttering. Maybe you're folding your laundry. Perhaps you're putting dishes in the dishwasher, dishes out of the dishwasher. How about this? You got some mail that's still in its envelopes? Un undo the mail, recycle the envelopes, and, and do some recycling and sorting of your mail. The things that don't take a lot of cognitive focus, you can get done while you also hear me kind of as your body double. Again, hello ADHD people, I'm speaking to you. As your body double to help you get through the things that normally you'd be like, yeah, whatever, I'll do that later. Do it now while you're being entertained and then by one o'clock Eastern, you're gonna be like, whoa, check me out. I learned something, feels good and I got some stuff done so that I have less decluttering to do over the weekend. So encouragement to use this time wisely. You do not need to look at the ca camera while I am speaking. If anything, think of this like a podcast. A podcast, Johnny, God, it's a podcast. And you don't need to see me in order to get the effect of it. And I show up in the spirit of encouragement, curiosity, love, can do, you can do it. If you're discouraged, if you're fearful, if you're stuck, I can help you get encouraged, less fearful, more in love with what you're doing and why you're doing it and get you unstuck and moving. Sound good? Okay, so the way I do that is also by the doing that is I want to answer your questions. What are you specifically struggling with? Specificity, specificity, specificity. Specificity is going to help you because it's going to pinpoint. Notice specific, pinpoint. It's going to pinpoint the point on the map where you say I'm going to do something. I know to get from here to here. I want to do that. But at a certain point in the map, you either stop and don't move forward in that direction or you detour and go in another direction. So get curious about those pinpoints. Let's pinpoint where you get stuck or detoured so that we can notice what happens there and then get you back on track. 
Okay. So I love it. Gail um, is saying, I got, I, excuse me, I took old electronics and plastic kitchenware that I no longer use to the recycling center. Rock on. I saw somebody, Jordan is saying rock on too. Wicked nice group of people who always show up to do these. It's always a, a different mix. It's never the same, never, never the same thing twice. I got to figure out what that is. That's something for my Gen X pop culture brain. But always encouragement here. We are. We will celebrate our wins. We will learn from the things that didn't go well so we can do better the next time. Okay? And we champion each other. So do that. There we go. Um, a red poppy says, I do this every week with my Zoom therapy. I empty and load my dishwasher. Awesome. Sylvia finally went through the mail and papers on my kitchen counter and does that kind of like Edvard Munch, I think it is. <gasps> Scary face. But Sylvia, you survived. You did it. Rock on that you did it. The thing we are so, it's, it's so funny. The more I life coach, the more I coach in general, the more I realize how much our nervous system is lovingly, I love my nervous system. I work with it. We all have it. But boy, is it afraid of a lot of things that you don't need to be afraid of. It's afraid of opening an envelope. It's afraid, I'm talking to myself. It's afraid of opening an envelope or an envelope, depending upon how to pronounce it. It's afraid of making a phone call. It's afraid of, you know, getting rid of something. It's afraid that that type of thing is going to cause us harm. Now, psychological harm, a little bit, but it's not going to kill you. So look at you, Sylvia. You did the thing you were afraid to do and you survived. Rock on. And hopefully it was not as scary or as bad as you thought it would be once you get started. Okay. Now, Jesse is saying, having trouble with mounds of clothing to donate. I hope folding and dropping off. Okay. How about this? Don't fold it. Just put it in a bag and drop it off. They're going to take it out of the bag. They're going to have to hang it up anyway. So make it easier on yourself. I'm all about, I used to work in, um, what was it? I had this random corporate job where I ended up as a process engineer. Now it wasn't necessarily random because we were downsizing and just shoving people all over the place. And I was a good doobie. I was a good worker. Speaking of, was that from Romper Room, the good doobies? I was a good doobie. I was doing more work than I needed to. And boy, did I want to get laid off, but uh, they weren't going to lay me off. I was a good worker. But what they did was they put me in jobs that I had no experience in, but I like to solve problems and I like to get stuff done. And I'm also, check me out, I'm not lazy, I'm efficient. So I see, a, I see a process and I say, okay, what can we cut out of this so we, we can get from A to B sooner so that we're at B, you know? Now I'm all about when, when you're enjoying the journey, taking the, the back roads when you want to get someplace and enjoying the journey, I have no problem with that. But sometimes you just want to get to where you want to get to. So the quickest you can get there, the more time you spend at that destination, at that beach, at that resort, at that destination that you want, you're so excited to get to. So what can you extract? How can you simplify your existing systems that are keeping you stuck or moving slowly so you can move more quickly? I can help you with that. I love doing stuff like that. I think it's, I'm crazy like that, but I think it's fun. So Jess, how about instead of folding the mounds of clothes, even just chunking it down into one bag, put it one bag of clothing together. See how that goes. Okay. Chunking it down. Oh, hey, somebody, Mama Pepper said, sold another box of clothes. Awesome. See how fun it can be. Other people are doing this stuff. We are all doing it ourselves. My husband's been decluttering. I've been decluttering my own stuff, bits and pieces. I've done so much decluttering myself and I rarely are bringing, am bringing things into the house that I don't have as much as my stuff, but I'm not perfect. I still have a table down the down the basement with some randomness on it that kind of got to low, but then I decided there was some more stuff. So I'm in it with you guys, but it's fun to see that other people are doing it because if they can do it, you can too. We can too. Okay. Um, there, yeah, Catherine says, be nice, maybe you treat yourself when you complete it. I'm all about the treats. Yes, can't hurt. Be like, drop off the things at the Goodwill, get an ice cream, you know, treat yourself. Just watch that um, you don't bring more clutter into your house. See, I used to do that. I used to go and I would declutter and bring stuff to a thrift store and I would jokingly call it an offering to the gods and then what do I do? I would go right back in there and I would re-clutter my house because I'd buy more stuff. It was like a cycle. And so I never really knocked down the clutter. I was just replacing things from one for another. I remember once, literally, you guys are gonna crack up at this. I had a garage sale 
and then we had stuff left over that we were going to donate across town and then we donated across town and we were driving someplace and I was like oh look there's a garage sale I literally hours after getting rid of my own crap and that both ways with the garage sale and the leftovers that I donated then I went to somebody else's garage sale and I bought something like you know I, I have fun with it because we're never going to be perfect exact machines and robots but isn't it kind of funny if you don't get the fact that what you're doing you might continue to do these things over and over again so having a treat I'm all about the treat yourself okay now red poppy is saying I have trouble starting a task if I know I have to leave at some point in the day now I have been that way in the past and boy oh boy RD do I know my mother is like this and here's something specific I want to share with you about this is when you have something depending upon how your calendar looks hopefully you have calendared something so you have one of those monthly calendars and you probably have like a little square on it that you write, you know, dentist appointment. So when you write that one thing on that one square of that day, your brain tends to erroneously think that thing takes up a wicked lot of time. The whole day is blown because I have to go to the dentist. However, there's another way. Now, let me use, I will use an example from my own life right here. I call this breeze blocking. And when you are on my, um, uh, mailing list we do uh, workshops on this when you're my one-on-one -on -one client we work specifically with your schedule I help you learn a different way so that you are able to start a task and be able to leave to get to your thing at a certain point of the day it's as simple as this you get a piece of paper you get your book you write down the day you put a, a number for the hour of the day you skip a line so each one of these lines represents a half an hour and then you put okay so when's your when's your appointment you put it down here starts at 2 I need to leave at 1 30 you put that on there and then you can actually visualize you can see how much time you have around that so that you calm down your nervous system say wait a minute I do have time trust me I know that feeling and that thought of I don't have time, I have to keep on running and running up. Shh. The way you change what you're doing is by changing what you're doing. Now, some days you don't have time. Some days you can't get anything started. Honor that. But there are days that you do have the time. So remind yourself when you hear from the backseat drivers, you don't have time to do that. You have to go to the dentist today. Just check if that's true. On days that it is, yeah, don't don't get anything. Make sure you get your appointments on time. But other days, you will have time. You say, wait a minute, I can see right here. I have a block of about four hours between now and when I have to leave for the dentist. I can get something started. And if you're afraid, again, I, I speak to the ADHD crowd a lot. If you are afraid, then if I go and I start something, I'm gonna. it's going to take me a while to get in, and then I finally get in, and I'm diving in, and I'm in the zone, and then I have to leave. There are ways you can help yourself go in, but also get out. It's kind of like jumping into a pool and not diving too deep and being able to get out of the pool in time to go do something else. And it's this device that I'm communicating with you right now. I feel like I'm on, I'm always joking about my difference. I pretend like I don't know the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. I totally do. But for effect, I swap them out and I irritate people, even though I think it's kind of funny. But like your telephone, your telephone. Am I old or what? Hello, telephone, Emily Latella. Um, your cell phone, your mobile phone, it has a timer in it, okay? So if you say to yourself, hey, I'm afraid to get something started because I need to leave at a certain time to go to a thing, set a timer, set a reminder, set an alarm that says, okay, an alarm goes off at 1.15 to remind me to wrap up what I need to do so that I can leave at 1.30 to go to my 2 o'clock appointment. There are ways you can work with your brain and get stuff done, okay? I offer that because I know what it's like to be in that mindset, that brain, that total chaos of, yeah, 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 the unhelpful, the unhelpful constant comment, as the T people would say, from the backseat drivers who don't want you to change, who like you the way you are. Now, there's plenty of stuff to love about you just the way you are. You are not broken. You don't need to fix anything. But if you yourself aren't digging where you're at, then let's change that up. If you dig what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you're getting there, there ain't nothing wrong nothing to fix but if you're you're frustrated and friction and aggravated and anxiety we can help with that okay Oop, what do we got here we got some other stuff going on I see some yeses I got some going on's 
Yeah, 15 minutes and walk away. Yes, Catherine, thank you for mentioning that. That's your timer. I love it. Um, user 3419 says, I just went through dresser drawers and closet, filled a hefty bag to drop off for donation. Awesome, you. Here's a Liz Lemon high five right there. Oh, I didn't put my rings on this morning. Um, yeah, okay, so Angela, noticing you're in a cycle. Noticing. You guys, it would be wicked funny if one week or even on one, um, maybe it's not so much on my TikTok lives, maybe I do it a lot more in coaching, the word notice. Notice the word notice. <laughs> Because noticing, it says, wait a minute. You stop and you pause. Say, wait a minute. That stopping and pausing is a game changer. Because when you stop and pause, what immediately happens, and I speak in like a road trip metaphor, is when you stop and pause on the road you're going ahead and the road is not leading, when, the road, when you know what you're doing isn't leading to where you want to go, if you stop and pause, mysteriously and magically, a, a um, what do you call it, a fork in the road will appear. And then you have a choice. You have a choice during that pause, during that notice. To say, wait a minute. If I keep on going on this road, it's going to lead me away from where I want to go. But if I stop now and I do something different, if I even incrementally shift and go this way, just a little smidge, and I do something different, and not just different for different sake, but strategy-wise, different that's going to get me less cluttered, if I stop and notice this, I can do something different. And the doing of the something different, even if it's just thinking different. Thinking different is where it all begins. Then feeling different and then doing different will get you a different result. So yes, when Angela is saying, I realized I'm in that cycle, when you realize you're in a cycle, you can stop that cycle. You can notice it. You can slow it down. You can unwind that cycle and say, oh, doesn't it feel funny? Doesn't it feel different? When I unwind that cycle, instead of going this way, I'm slowing it down, I'm reversing it. Oh, okay, I have control over this. I can slow it down and say, wait a minute. What is something, what would I rather feel? What would I rather do? What's gonna get me to my destination now? Calm down your nervous system, love your nervous system, calm it down, do something different, okay? There we go. You know, Melanie is saying one of those great things is notice when you tell yourself something better, you feel better, you do better. I always tell myself that my things will have a second loving home. It makes me feel good when I donate things. And when you feel good, you will do good. When you feel better, you will do better. It will be easier. I am telling you, I get so much more done and it feels like effortless when I feel better. When I don't feel well, even doing the most minimal things feels like a huge effort. And that isn't just feeling well sick-wise, because as some of you know, I wasn't feeling so well when I got back from my trip. And so for the first time in like forever, I called off, I, I cut one of my TikTok lives in half. Now, the funny thing is, is I made a commitment to myself. It's a very informal commitment that each one of my TikTok lives is an hour. I never set that in stone, but I also was like, you know what, you guys, I'm going to honor. I don't feel well. So if I don't feel well, I'm not going to show up for my best self. Um, so I'm going to cut this short. I took care of myself. And now look at me, I feel so much better. And when I do better, you can tell by the energy in me. And when you feel better, you're gonna do better. Right, okay, so notice that. All right, bathroom drawers to work on next. All right, there we go. Makes you more excited, exciting energy. Makes me more excited about donating. There we go, I love all this good stuff. You guys are rocking it. There we go. Okay, you know what, Chrissy? You know, I saw you yesterday, was so excited until I came down sick. I will go back to decluttering. Yes, you will. And it's okay, don't beat yourself up. The best thing you can do, and part of this is why I got my certification as a life coach, because I know that you are, decluttering does not happen in a bubble. Unless I guess you're the boy in the plastic bubble. Um, you need to pay attention to you first. Decluttering happens here. Decluttering happens in your head and your heart before you ever move your hands to do anything, external external, but it has to run through this system and this system to get out to there. So when you're not feeling well here or here or in your belly or you're tired, you're, you're not feeling well, take care of yourself. Make yourself do things to make you feel better. When you feel better, you will do better. I got off of that TikTok live. I went to bed for hours because I felt like crap. But me resting my body allowed my body to heal and feel better and then I felt better the next day and I showed up for my TikTok lives and my coaching and my consultations and I showed up for my friends and I did some things and now I feel better. So take care of yourself, okay? There we go. Okay, Foxy, you are not alone in this, 
Okay, Foxy is saying, and the reason I do, um, just so you know, I always reread these comments because the comments that I see flipping by me do not show up when um, when the TikTok lives are on, on YouTube. Foxy is saying, if I'm cleaning the kitchen, does this sound familiar to any of you? If I'm cleaning the kitchen, I find things that belong in other rooms. Yeah, moving them derails my mind. Notice, all right, somebody put a quarter in the jar. I said, notice, notice that you know what derails you so you can do something about it. Here's what I want to offer. That derailment, you're not a train, but I know what you mean. You get distracted and the next thing you know, you don't know nothing. Catch yourself before you wreck yourself. Catch yourself before you go out of the room. I don't say don't put it there, but practice staying focused in the kitchen. That may mean putting things near the door, but not going out of that room. It may mean setting a timer and saying, I'm going to be in the kitchen for a certain amount of time. And then when the timer goes off, I will leave the room. It will be catching yourself. Again, notice that. You notice, you. hey, I noticed. I am learning. My brain has given me a clue here. As soon as you stop and notice, you have the opportunity to course correct. You can keep on going the way you're doing and get the same result. Or the invisible fork in the road appears. It was invisible. Now it's visible. And you can do something different, okay? Um, try that, Foxy. Try what I offered. Let me know if it worked. And what works, do more of. And what doesn't work, this is what I love, is what doesn't work. Let's, let's disassemble it and find out where it didn't work and assemble it better so it works better. And we do that, and that's the power of one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will say, is that I can only hope, help so many people to a certain level during a, a, a live like this. So you get a little taste of it, but man, is it more powerful when we are strategic about especially where you are. Now, I don't say that to like hawk my wares, but I will say that if you want to get, like from now, I'm trying to think. So March is next week. So it'll be March, April, halfway, March, April, May. By the end of May, if you started coaching with me now, I'm just saying this as like a time thing. You started coaching with me. You, you, you signed up. You went to my website. You got a consultation. A consultation is just you and me talking on um, Zoom to make sure that it's a good fit. You know, um, if you're struggling with, I can help you with what the price is, how long it goes. But if you started even as soon as next week, by Memorial Day weekend, your home and life would be so transformed from what it is now. You, I can't even, as the kids say, like it's, it's just, you would be amazed with somebody who's been on the road before. I know the tricks. I know the tips. I know where you're going to go off course and I can help you get back on track. And it's not just like I'm in there with you all the time. I teach you these things and you practice them so you can do it yourself. I'm kind of like a halfway, like a travel guide and a sidekick and a, um, a driver's ed teacher. I teach you how to do something you just currently don't know the best way of doing it. And then we make it so it fits your life and your head and the way your brain works. That's one-on-one -on -one coaching, Charlie Brown. I freaking love it. That's why I do it. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. And it's really, seriously, it's just the, the shortcut to get you on the road and enjoy the, the thing, the, the, desti the, the journey and the destination. Okay. And thank you, Sylvia, for, for saying you hope you... you you're glad I'm feeling better. I am glad I'm feeling better too. So thank you. Okay. Um, here, okay. Chrissy C. Jump. This is an interesting thing. Why do I have more motivation to clean when my husband isn't here? He's a good guy and helpful. Awesome. What do you think the reason is? Um, I know myself is sometimes when somebody is in the house, I can get easily distracted. Just even having the energy of somebody around. I There's different energy in my house when I'm alone. And I can really get into something and not hear something. What was that? I am easily distracted. I will still, to this day, like wear ear blow, earbuds, you know, to even not even, I used to do this when I was in corporate so people wouldn't bug me. And also being in an open office environment, it was so freaking distracting. I was like, how does anybody get anything done? I would put on my earbuds, even if I was listening to nothing, just so I could, I could think, hear myself think. Um, so it has nothing to do with, he's, he's a good guy and helpful. Maybe it's just easier for you to be more motivated to clean when he's not there. Find the things that make it easier for you, okay? Uh, Denise Diane saying, thank you, Beth, for sharing your heart and knowledge. We greatly appreciate you, thank you. Well, I appreciate you showing up because I wouldn't be doing this if nobody showed up. Um, speaking of showing up, let me just do one of those because, oh my gosh, we're already halfway through this TikTok Live. 12.30 Eastern time, I feel like I'm on 
college radio like I used to be back in the day. It's 1230, bottom of the hour. My name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. Destination Decluttered. Follow me here on TikTok at Destination Decluttered. Also, I have a free um, email mailing list. Uh, we do a lot of cool stuff on the mailing list. It's a bit of a taste of what it's like to have a one-on-one -on -one coach because every month we do a group Zoom call. So you can feel the power of somebody speaking directly to you and answering your problem. And also, you get first dibs on knowing when my next TikTok lives are going to be. Um, first dibs on coaching consultations, um, on, the, on knowing when the calendar is updated. And also, I do occasionally do free workshops about time, uh, time management. Even that bores me to even say it. I call it breeze blocking. The, the thing I was talking about earlier with making sure you don't say, oh, I can't do anything today because I have a dentist appointment at 2 o'clock. So, Destination Decluttered, Beth Decluttering Life Coach. Okay? There you go. Hop on my web... Oh, what's the mailing list? DestinationDecluttered.com slash join. Yeah, hop on that. I see a couple of people signing up. Um, and welcome. Cool stuff. Okay? Yeah, just give yourself a chance to answer your own questions. When you ask me why, often what I will do is say, let's pause. I don't know why, but what do you think? What's your thoughts? Because that's where the real interesting stuff has. I can, I can conjure, I can make suggestions, but you, when I ask you the question, then you're like, all right, this is what it could be, you know? Uh-huh, okay, Mamacita is saying, kid clutter, toys, etc. daily chores, feel exhausted and overwhelmed. Honey, I am here for you, okay? Because this is how I roll clutter-wise, and especially if you've got kids and you've got chores and you're feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. First of all, you gotta take care of yourself. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And if you're exhausted, it's showing and it's reflect. It's making you feel like crap. And you have pot. You have a, like you know these kind of smell waves. It's not helping anybody. So take care of yourself first, and everything will be easier. Now the other way I coach, and I'm very clear about this, is I truly believe that decluttering is a life skill for everybody. Decluttering at its core is being able to know yourself enough to say, what is this thing? Well, that anybody could do. What is this thing? Oh, you know, it's a, it's a salt, salt shaker. Do I want this thing in my life? Only you can answer that. But that being able to say, what do I want in my life? And what do I not want in my life? What do I want in my home? That is a powerful skill to have at any age. Now at different ages of developmental ages and children, you approach this differently, but I firmly believe that it is a disservice to your growing children to not have them participate in the decluttering and also the tidying up of the home of the places that they come into contact with. Now, as I said, I know there's, you know, you're not going to have a little kid who's crawling around to make them want to, you know, put the dishes in the dishwasher, but you are teaching your kids how to become a independent person so that when they leave to live on their own they are equipped with all the skills that they need to live both independently and alone and work well with others okay so I say this to to all the mamacitas is um, with love teach your kids how to do this get involved don't do it just when you do something for somebody they don't learn how to do it themselves now there's always going to be a balance about this you know, I was Gen X, so I freaking, you know, went to an empty house and forgot my key and had to make myself dinner and got myself up in the morning and all that kind of stuff. There is a balance there, people. It's not all or nothing. And find a balance that works with you. But notice where you are doing more work decluttering than anybody else in the house. Notice it. Notice it. There's another quarter in the jar. Notice it. Stop and notice that. Say, what could we do differently? Because... This is not working out. This is not sustainable. If we were a business, one person's doing all the work, nobody else is, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Kit Kat says. You always say the right things. You know what? I just say what comes out of my head, but I know I've, I'm old. I'm older than I was, you know? But I have learned some stuff through my years. Thank God. I can't imagine not learning some stuff and being here. I want to help you with my knowledge in that notion of, not being able to put an old head on new shoulders. I want to put an old head on new shoulders. I want to save you decades of your life by giving you the shortcuts that it took me decades to learn. I want to save your time so you start living the life you want 
decades earlier than I started it. Now, trust me, I'm glad I am where I am right now. And I am glad that the journey I took on my life is then helping other people. I feel cool with what I'm doing, how I do it, all the things. And I know that I feel like it's really important to give back and to, and to share with people what I have learned on my journey. It's like being on a road trip and being like, hey, avoid that pothole. There's going to be a detour here. Oh, that road is a dead end here. Before you even go down that dead end, go this way. I, I kind of carved a path, I, you know, and I got there. I can make it easier on you because I've learned the shortcuts. Okay. Yeah. Mom said, I never learned essential to teach kids early. Yeah. Life skill is a long, lifelong journey. Oh, nice to see you, Susan Potter. Not a one and done, but maintenance is so much easier. Yes. Yeah. See, this is the thing. I'm all about ease. Like I joke that that's going to be like a book I write or something because one of the great things about decluttering is it's just so much freaking easier to live a simple, easy life. It's easier for me to pack my bags. It's easier for me to go on vacation. It's easier for me to come home from vacation and immediately, you know, you know, put my stuff away. It's easier to come home to a house that's not cluttered. It feels better to go off and be like, I get to do whatever I want every weekend because I don't have to clean my room. I don't have to clean because everything's already looking good and feeling good. How much free time would you have if you didn't have to be spending your time and not just the time time, but the psychic energy it takes for you to be reminding yourself to gotta clean, gotta clean, gotta clean. It's freaking exhausting, people. Let's quiet that down, have you do it, decrease the amount of, excuse me, I'm getting all excited so I get all trippy, not, trippy on my tongue. Decluttering is, too pro, is a two-step process. Not, it, we often think it's just decreasing the quantity of stuff you have in your house. That is important, but that's only half of it. The other half of it that is equally, if not more so important, is being aware of and changing your habits that got the stuff to build up in the first place so that after you decrease this, if you, after you decrease this, you don't change your habits, it piles up again. Right? Am I right? I'm right. I know. And I know I'm right. But... While you're decreasing the stuff you have, if you notice, why did I get that? Why did I hang on to this? And you say, okay, next time I'm going to do different, that will decrease the likelihood that the stuff is going to pile up again. And then you just don't have giant piles to deal with. Of course you have the little everyday things. We don't live in museums. We live in our houses. They're going to be a little bit cluttered. They're going to get cleaner. But it's not that dramatic kind of roller coaster that you're on. It's more like the merry-go-round. You know, like I was traveling last week. I will be honest with you, because why would I lie about stuff like this? I came home. I felt like crap. I went in immediately into a day of coaching and then resting. So unlike usual times, my suitcase is still packed up. Now, I feel better now. And as soon as I'm done with this TikTok live, I have plans to unpack it. I'm not worried about it. It's not being packed for months. But notice when you feel better, you do better. And you cut yourself some slack. You don't live in a museum. I want you to enjoy where you live and have it be easy for you to keep it clean. You know? Aw. Thank you, Pam the dog lady. Saying she does, doesn't she? She's amazing. Here. There we go. Yeah, Gen Xers. Yeah, my people. You'll hear me when I start to talk like I watched too much TV or just the right amount of TV as I grew up and listened to all sorts of AM and FM radio. Um, I am Y is saying, wannabe crafter. Craft room hoarding situation. My paralysis, oh, this is a good one. My paralysis, notice my paralysis is something. Paralysis is stuck, right? My paralysis is a thought. We could put little quotes around that and you know that that's words in your head. I've spent so much money on this stuff. I have a thought that is keeping me stuck. Notice that's your head and your heart. Excuse me, your head and your hands. What's in between that is your heart. No, when I say heart, excuse me. I think of that as like your nervous system. So what's going on in here? So you have a thought that makes you feel like you're going to get in trouble if you donate stuff that you spent money on. That something bad is going to happen if you spent money on something and didn't use it and gave it away. Does that resonate? Yeah. This is what I want to offer to you. That I spent good money on it. If everybody here probably has an example of something they struggled to get rid of, and I say get rid of, I got to use a better phrase, struggled to move something out of their life because I spent a lot of money on it. But let me ask you this. Every day when you see that stuff, how do you feel? 
when you have paralysis, when you're not crafting, get curious why you're not crafting. Now, I'm not gonna convince you to be a crafter. I too was a wannabe crafter. I would see things out there that people crafted and I thought, hey, I could do that. So I bought the stuff, I collected the stuff, I thrifted the stuff, holy Moses. During COVID, when I went down and really started to get into my own decluttering, you know, and not just the surface area, the surface in our house always looked pretty good, but you went behind doors or open drawers and it was like, ooh, don't look, it's a hot mess. But when I started going through that, what I realized was, and I actually realized this thing about the, the, um, about the crafting literally years ago, like 2009, because that's when I started my website and my blog about travel, is I said, wait a minute, I, th I think in my head I want to craft, but when I have the free time to do it, I'm not doing crafting. So I'm going to not feel guilty about that. What I'm saying is I'd rather spend my time elsewhere. Where do I, where do, I do that? And I liked driving around and taking pictures of old places. I made that into a blog, a website, a, t a video series. I wrote books. I was on TV. I honored what I was drawn towards instead of trying to convince myself to do something that I really wasn't drawn to do. I thought I was going to, and then I changed my mind. Hang it, having the stuff hang around did not convince me otherwise. So I am why. Notice that you have a thought that's causing you to stay stuck. What is a better thought? What Get curious about what's going on in there. Have a conversation with yourself. Why aren't I doing this? And just know that your peace of mind and your peace of mind is in your head and in your nervous system. Think of the relief you would feel if all that stuff was free and you were giving it to somebody who just would love to do the crafting, how good it would feel for you to get rid of that stuff, to pass it out of your room and say to yourself, is me making myself feel guilty about the, the, the money like how much is, am I willing to pay to make myself feel like crap? You know, you're keeping yourself, that stuff is making you feel like crap. It will feel so much better when you release it. All you need to do is scramble up the words in your brain and come up with a better thought, make it easier to release, okay? Okay, so notice this. Um, notice, again, I'm putting, I get 75 cents in my, in my, uh, my jar right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm backing up here a little bit. Um, okay, yep, I need easier and I need to feel better. I can help you with that. And it's not that difficult. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple and it's doable. And the thing I love about what I'm doing it was funny. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they were saying, oh, it's kind of like being a therapist. I will be honest. I never wanted to be a therapist. I have people in, my mother has a freaking PhD in psychology. She's also wicked cluttered. So physician heal thyself. But what I want to suggest is that I love the fact that what I'm telling you is pretty much simple and repeatable. And you can use this info for the rest of your life in different areas of your life. That's why I'm so excited to share this. Because it's not just about your house looking and feeling better, but it's your life looking and feeling better. Okay? So that's why I's here. Okay? What else do we have here going on? All right. Okay, Giselle, your mother's a hoarder. All right, pay attention to that. Get curious, don't judge her, get curious. Here's, here's the thing too, I probably haven't said this recently. I often think of there's two sides to every coin or a 45 RPM record. There's always the one hand and then on the other hand, so I want you to think of when you've only been listening to, I can't keep this, I have to do this, it's so hard, whatever. There's another side to that story on this side. On this side, you're stuck, on this side, you're moving. On this side, you're fearful, on this side, you're loving. On this side, you're judgy. On this side, you're curious. So curiosity and love and discouraged over here, encouraged over here. Let's hang out on this side. So don't judge your mom. And I don't, I'm not saying you are. Get curious why she's a hoarder, but see how that is affecting you and how you deal with your stuff. Okay, here we go. Uh, Catherine's saying, looking forward to your book and maybe some merch. Okay, I will share this with you. Merch will come before the book because I've written books before. I am gonna get I am gonna need to get a really good book offer before I write a book. I think it would be fun. I'm putting it out there, but I can see myself doing a printful um, a printful shop with some mugs and some stickers. That feels fun to me. You've seen me. I don't have my mug because I've been sitting here coaching all day, but I just made a mug. So mugs and stickers with some inspirational sayings on them. I've already been looking actually at doing some like this is a prototype for some like a sheet of stickers that has different um, different sayings on them. So I'm playing with that idea. So it's it's in the works, um, but I'm going at a pace that feels right to me, okay? 
So notice that. Um, notice, put another quarter in there. Oh my gosh. I almost said notice again. I can't even, I don't know what, what word to use. Notice how you fall into habits of doing things. I am totally in a groove where that is my verb, but we get into habits of speaking, of word usage, of dropping our stuff when we come in the house, of not dealing with our mail, of walking in and dropping the mail anywhere, of coming home from the grocery store and not putting stuff away, of leaving the laundry in the, in the dryer for ages or leaving it pile up on the bureau for a wicked long time. You have habits that make you cluttered. You know what the great thing is? You can do the opposite of the, the you can change that habit. You have a habit that gets you cluttered. You can create another habit gets, that gets you less cluttered. Okay? So isn't that fun? There we go. And daily bird, hope and gratitude. Doesn't that feel better than hopelessness and feeling bummed about stuff? When you feel better, you're going to do better. So this is a good head and 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 body, a good head and heart space to be in. A good heart space, head and heart space. That sounds kind of fun. To be in, to say, okay, what do I want my home to look like? What are some things I can do today? Because I can do things today to, no matter how incremental, to do something different today so that my, my house looks and feels better to me by the end of the day today. When you are in this good mindset, you will come up with some good stuff you can do. When you're thinking crappy and feeling crappy, you're going to be like, I don't know, I can't do anything. It's too much. I'm just going to put the, you know, put the covers, put the covers over my head. But when you feel better, when you think better and feel better, you're going to do better. Now, I will say the thinking and better and feeling better isn't something you're going to wake up every day like Snow White and kind of drift out of it. It can take some work. You need to prime the pump. You need to warm up your engine. It isn't something that co comes automatically to the human brain. That's why the human brain has the backseat drivers can't do it. No, no, no. Stop, stop. Scary. No, blah, blah, blah. Keep you safe. They're on 24 seven. You cannot shut them off. Can't shut them off and they'll always be in your car for the rest of your life, but you can quiet them down and then say, shh, quiet down, quiet down, sim it down now. And then you can say, what would I rather think? What would I rather feel? You write that stuff down, you hear it in your brain and notice even just hearing me say it is making you feel better and you feel like you can do something. Okay. There we go. Athena's got, got married and had two households combined. It's a story of a lovely lady, right? Still trying to go through things. Cool. Keep at it. What's keeping you stuck? Probably because it's a wicked lot of things. You have duplicates. Who's, whose spaghetti strainer are we going to use? Mine or yours? Do we need two spaghetti strainers? The duplication? Yeah, that can be a thing. How many? How, what's the quantity? How many of these do we need? Which one is better? Which one is easier? Oh, well, this one doesn't work as well, but I have a sentimental attachment to it. So... This isn't a one and done process. This is a this is a process that you do a little bit each day, but the more you do, the less you have to go through until it's kind of done. So don't give up on it. Even though you're still trying to go through it, no matter how long, keep on going, you know? There we go. Okay, so Melissa is saying and sharing with me and all of you, um, coming from someone who has always had clutter, the feeling you get from decluttering is priceless. And she's got the little smiley face with the little hearts. I love that one. Yes, it isn't just about how it looks. It's about how you feel in your home and also how it functions. Because part of you feeling good in your home is easy. Easy to find things, easy to use things, easy to put them away. Because you found a home for them that makes sense to you and your brain and the way your home works. Everybody's home and life and brain is a little bit different. So customizing a way of the way your house and your home support you so you can easily find whatever you're looking for easily use it because it works well and it's not broken and you're not frustrated by it and easily put it back because you have those habits so you find it there the next time chef's kiss and also all that ease just reduces the amount of time it takes you to do something so you have something to do you do it and you're done and then you have more free time to scroll on tiktok kind of fun huh you know all right yeah, okay, Amy says clutter gives me anxiety, trying to declutter your mom's place. Yep, yeah, I know that feeling. Pay attention to decluttering for or at other people. I have helped my mother. I will continue to do so, but I only do it with her permission, okay? And um, yes, forget, yeah, everybody's, many people, I will say Kit Kat, you're fearing the forgetting a part of people. Yes, the fear of forgetting is a big one. 
That's probably why you have visual reminders around to remind you to do something. But here's a seed I want to plant in the garden of your brain, or I'll offer it to you. You want the seed to plant it? Is do I need to keep this physical item to remember the story that it tells me? Or is there another way that I could do something to remember the story and not have to keep track of this item? And usually what people come up with is I can take a picture of it. I can take a picture and have a digital picture of this outfit that I wore on my honeymoon. I can have a digital picture of the, you know, the um, china set of one of the plates that my parents had and not have to keep it all. Is there a way that I can remember the story without having to hold on to all this stuff? Okay, notice that. Yeah, Caitlin is having a great feeling deep cleaning and decluttering her boys' room now. Such a great feeling. Love that feeling, but Caitlin, get them involved too. Get them involved too. Show them what you did, and so you can set an expectation for them when they come home so that you don't have to go in and do it again. Okay, so here's what I did. I picked up your dirty laundry off the floor and I put it in this hamper. So what I'd like you to do is get in the habit of putting your, you know, every night before you go to bed, setting some boundaries and some time limits. Before you go to bed, make sure your dirty laundry is in the hamper. Get people used to decluttering now when they're little and they won't have the trouble that we all struggle with now at our age. Okay, good stuff. All right, here we go. Um, there we go. Red Poppy says, oops, excuse me. Red Poppy says, I stopped buying magazines and you use Pinterest instead. Awesome idea. There we go. All right. Inessa, still going through mail. I have separated by month. Junk mail going to the county recycle program. Awesome, my friend. How about this? This is really going to be helpful to a lot of you. Is setting yourself some realistic kind of boundaries, deadlines, a time in which you say, I feel like I could get that done by X date and keeping you to it. So if you're going, if it's separated by month, awesome. When, when do you, could you set yourself, I want to be done with February of 2024's mail by this date and time on my calendar. Look at the time you have. This is what breeze blocking does. Say, do I have the time? When can I do this? About how long do I think it's going to do? And make a promise to yourself and keep it. Practice keeping the promises you make to yourself. If that isn't a life skill, I don't know what it is. You know how bad it feels when somebody promises you something and then they break that promise? Think of the compound crappiness that you have when you break promises to yourself all the time. Just notice how different it feels when you keep a promise to yourself. And it can be a very small promise, but it can be like, it can be like a spider web, very small, but very strong, okay? Uh-huh. Um, yep. Definitely good stuff here. All right. So we got seven minutes. Um, uh, Chrissy is asking about the, the, the sorting things. Yep. Yep. Don't beat yourself up. I have not looked at my mail. I won't say how long. Any help to start? Yeah. Chunk it down. Wonderful thing is, is Chrissy just suggested, because we're all here to help each other, sort it by business bills, junk mail. That's great. The other one, too, is um, Anessa said she got hers going separated by month and then going through the junk mail. You can do it in a way that makes sense to you. I say keep it simple. These are the few categories that I suggest in my, in 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 because categorizing, categorizing and organizing your stuff by category is a major thing in decluttering because then you know what you have. I find that mail will well my mother jokes about it. It's either ads, ABC, ads, bills and charities. So think about that. Ads are junk mail. Get them in the recycle. Charities, I'm pissed off at you people. Those also go in the junk mail. All you should have left is kind of bills or a subset of bills is kind of that paperwork, reminders of things, some things that me make you take action. You know? And look at this. This is wonderful. I love seeing the collaboration between people of, um, of we're all here to help each other. Because notice, you're not alone in this. Not at, Trust me. The fraction of people that show up for my TikTok lives indicates to me that there is a huge, I don't want to say problem, but many of us struggle with the clutter because of the environment we live in. We live in the most easy, the, the time of our history, the most distracted and distractible time in our history, the time where we can easily get so much stuff without very little effort 
that it is so easy to get stuff coming in, but we also come from a live, a le, you know, a lineage of scarcity and holding on to things because of self-preservation. So it's our external. It's not just about us. We are not failing. It is our environment that makes it so much difficult, much more difficult to have a balance that works for us. And so we need to counteract that by decreasing the amount of stuff that comes in and increasing the amount of stuff that goes out in a way that feels good to you. And when you get the balance right, as you know, Depeche Mode would say, instead of feeling like you have too much or you have too little, like Oleox would say, you feel just right. And notice where my hand is when I say just right, because it's not just about how it looks, but it's about how you feel. Because if it don't feel good, don't do it. But man, does it feel good when you look around and you say, hey, check it out. I don't have to spend my Saturday tomorrow I don't have to spend my Saturday cleaning my room. I get to do whatever the F I want because I have learned to not just be cluttered and you know clean up, I, I declutter a little bit and I'm good and then tomorrow I'm going out and playing. I am, I'm gonna have some fun. Whatever I feel like doing that day, I get to decide what I do with my time. I'm not always cleaning or decluttering and this can happen to you too, okay? Um, okay, yeah, Mommy Salami is saying, well, this is true, um, okay. Uh, Sherry Hooper is saying, okay, let me get to two things before I sign off because I've only got about four minutes. So Sherry is saying, each room I go into, I don't know where to start. Start somewhere. I recommend this. Three layers of clutter. Start with your surface clutter. Start with trash first. The stuff you know definitely you don't want. Start with trash. Start with the stuff you don't want. That is easy peasy. The stuff that gives a, a stop sign, you know, a stoplight in your gut. Then notice the stuff you do want in that room. Keep that stuff. And then the stuff that's in the middle, we'll get curious about that. That's what coaching helps you with. But you do, you can start. You can decide, I can start anywhere and it's going to make a difference. I'll start with trash. And do that in one room and repeat. In another room and repeat. Or stay in the same room. Getting started and doing something will almost always be better than not doing anything. Okay? Now, Mommy Salami brings up a good point before I sign off. If you're environmentally conscious and want to recycle, that makes it hard to just throw stuff out. Yes, so I don't recommend just throwing out. I say examine all the options you have in your area. Now, I live in Pennsylvania. Where I live, I have certain resources around me. I coach people from across the country. Wherever you live, it can be a totally different scenario as far as places you can donate things but a couple of things if you don't want to immediately put things into the trash and they're still usable you can offer you can put a free sign out on your lawn and put them out for free you can put them on facebook for free you can donate them to a charity you can see if any of your friends wants them you can sell them there are many steps in between i don't want it in the trash can the other thing though too i will say about this talk about the environment we live in I don't want to make the world any worse, but I am going to guarantee you, to put it into perspective, that in the short time that I have done this one-hour TikTok Live, that there are corporations and um, companies across the globe that have done more damage to the environment than your stuff you're putting in the trash as an individual. Now, am I saying this to tell you to put everything in the trash? Hells to the no. But putting it into perspective... There has been a, you know, a, a, a plane that flew over my house that has probably done more damage to the environment in that one airplane thing trip than I will ever do in my entire life of putting things in the trash. Okay, so notice what you tell yourself if it's keeping you stuck. Play with a different idea. Create a different idea and a thought in your head that might make it easier for you to get things out of your life because you only have one life. Make the best of it. Use, make the most of the time you have. Okay? Now, I am noticing it is 12.59, so I'm going to wrap up because I need to get my own day going. Oops. But I'm noticing some of you have signed up on the mailing list. Awesome. Welcome. If you're interested, it's free. I just offer it as, you know, kind of a baby step if you're interested in coaching, but you don't know what the next step is. Wicked nice bunch of people. Um, DestinationDeclutter.com slash join. We will have a monthly Zoom, free monthly Zoom call that you only get if you're on the mailing list um, in um, uh, March. We just did the one for February, so that's coming up. Uh, if you're interested in me being your one-on-one -on -one coach, I can also do that. I have availability next week for um, doing consultations, and that gets you 
um, you know, kind of on the calendar so that between now you could do some decluttering with focused decluttering with a coach from now until like Memorial Day weekend and your summer, your summer people, your place would look and feel so much better. So if you want me as your one-on-one -on -one coach, there's a way to do that. Um, and then the last thing too is um, I will be doing TikTok lives. Now I might do some this weekend, I might not, but I usually do schedule them during the week. So if you're interested in that, follow me here on TikTok, Destination Decluttered. And um, yeah, I don't know when those are going to be because I haven't gotten to that part of today's you know list of things to do. But the people who are going to know the first are the people who sign up on the mailing list. So just to let you know that. All right, everybody, 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 have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and keep on driving towards your destination decluttered. Enjoy it. It is a road trip. Life is a road trip, not a commute. Okay. You can do it. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.